When I was much younger, about seven years old, I remember my brother Philip, who was five at the time, being really annoying. He would follow me everywhere, trying to do everything I did. When I was playing video games, he would sit right next to me and watch me. When I was working on an important project, like building a pillow fort in my room, he would appear out of nowhere and help with the construction. While building, Philip would ask for the next step of the process before he even finished his job. While all of this was super annoying, I came to realize over time that if my brother was following me, that meant I was leading. Neither of us realized this. While, during the making of the fort, Philip was teaching me about what kind of leader I wanted to be and in turn, what kind of lessons I wanted both of us to learn about following. Being my first follower, Philip was important to my future if I ever wanted to be a leader. A leader isn't a leader until he or she can recruit at least one follower. Derek Sivers popularized this notion in his TED talk called How to Start a Movement. Sivers shows a movie of a seemingly strange person dancing alone on a hillside. Soon, a second person joins him. Seeing the first follower join the leader encourages a third person to join, after which more people join and create an impromptu dance party. Sivers helps us see that the, first, that the leader is almost not as important as the first follower, because without that first follower, the, the leader is just a weirdo dancing on a hillside. <laughs> Likewise, without my younger brother, I was not a master artist in a military force. I was just alone in my room with a couple of pillows. Finding followers on a hillside is easy, but to build a bigger movement, a leader needs to access a large community of potential followers, which they can do nowadays through social media. Emma Gonzalez, a high school student who is part of the March for Our Lives movement, wants to make gun legislation safer after the shooting at our school in Parkland, Florida. This is making a huge difference because she has over 1 million followers at her Twitter handle, at Emma for Change. With her fellow classmates, she was able to rally her followers to coordinate the historic March for Our Lives movement in Washington, D.C. This event led to people around the world taking to the streets to voice their feelings about gun control. But due to the gravity and the unique position to give voice to this cause, Emma was able to acquire her followers in just over a month. This number exceeds the NRA's National Rifle Association Twitter followers by over 400,000. So yes, garnering followers can help make changes to the world. But what about when we blindly follow or trick into following? What if I led my brother down a path that could endanger him? I would never do this on purpose, but it seems some very influential people around the world would. Russia's interference in the 2016 election had a great deal to do with misleading followers because Russian operatives opened bogus social media accounts bought advertisements and staged political rallies that, di that directed people to the actual fake news on social media, which may have swayed their political leanings. Russia was able to do this because in 2014, 270,000 people blindly followed a link to a fun game that propped up in their, in their profile, which had them take a personality test. The third party app that sponsored this test used it to gather information about these people and their friends. The information was then used by the firm called Cambridge Analytica to help assist in the manipulation of the American public. Mark Zuckerberg, the founder of Facebook, is slowly coming around to the notion that as a leader, it is not just important to build a platform that helps, the world in, uh, helps connect the world in constant communication. He has to care for the people who trust and follow him by protecting their information. The truth is, we should all be discerning followers. We should all pick and choose whom we follow so we are not being led down paths that do not deserve our interest. What this translates to, for my brother and me, is that if he thinks I'm cool enough to follow, it is my responsibility to lead him conscientiously. Not just so he learns from my example, but so one day, when someone without the best interest in mind begs him to follow, he will rem remember the lessons I taught him and have the strength to choose a different path. Thank you.